Hello guys, welcome back to this week's episode of TGIF. Thank God it's forever where Jesus does most definitely and ultimately come first. This here is Chaplain Andrew to teach you the unchangeable and unfailable Word of God. Listen for this theme song and you'll know. It's me, hello, podcast land. Hello guys. Hey, I am so sorry today. I got on the wrong bus. I was on my way home, and one of the ladies at work, Lou, nice lady, she works the hardest over there. I mean, she kicks a major butt, and I like Lou a lot. She's a good lady. She kicks butt. She knows what she's doing. She, when she wants to get out of there, she gets out of there. So she took me to the bus stop today, and I get on the wrong bus, or I get on a bus, and I don't see what's going on. The bus doesn't have any sounds, because normally it says, next stop. You know, and then it tells you what the next stop is. Next stop, Solon, Ohio. Next stop, Bedford. But it didn't tell me anything because it was broken or something. And I'm on this bus. I'm going all the way down to Windermere. Whoever, anyone knows where Windermere is. That's one of the the bus depots in Cleveland. I was in downtown Cleveland trying to figure out why I'm downtown Cleveland. So I finally got on the right bus. A lady was nice enough to get me her bus ticket, and I got on the right bus, and I got home safely, thankfully, but that's why I'm late today. Just be aware, it might start beeping soon. My phone. Yep, there it goes. So that's why I'm late today, because I got on the wrong bus, or a bus, and didn't see what's going on. I don't know. I just know that I decided to go home, which, here's the crazy thing. It's funny because... I thought to myself, nah, I'm not going to have Lou take me to the bus stop today. I'm just going to wait here. I thought about waiting right at work and not even leave him to workplace. I thought about that. I said, well, nah, not leaving. And then all of a sudden, I, she kept saying, come on, you can come, you can come. I take, I take, I take. I said, okay, I'll go. And what happens? I get lost. So I'm here. I am live with you guys. It is absolutely phenomenal to be here. I am so excited right now because, hey, it's Monday. It's my chance to give you a message. It's my chance to preach the Word of God to you. Now, I preach in topics. I I take a topic and I preach on it. Now, does that mean I'm going to run out of topics? Absolutely. But soon we're going to start on doing a new series on books of the Bible. For instance, like, say, John or Mark or something. We'll take a whole book of the Bible and we'll actually do a sermon based on the book. We'll just read the Bible together. And then from there, we will, I'll expound on a little bit, but we will take each, we'll take a book of the Bible, a book of the Bible, and we'll expound on it. So do like, First John one one, and then we'll go on from there. I think that'll be our next our next sermon series would be like John one, or something. We'll start off in the New Testament. I might go to the old. I don't really need to go to the Old Testament. I can. But see, the Old Testament is just a collection of stories that happened. It's not. Something that is teaching us now, I would say. It's more like a collection of stories. Like Moses striking the rock out of anger, okay? Is God trying to tell us that, you know, we shouldn't get angry? I mean, he could be. But it's a story about Moses getting mad and getting angry. It's about Moses. Now, I can see if, you know... John, a disciple, did something and God wanted to teach us a lesson through that, then absolutely. God can still teach us a lesson through Moses. Who knows? God might speak through me, through me, through the Old Testament. I don't know. But to me, the Old Testament is a collection of stories that happened before that won't ever happen again, like the burning bush. Moses talking to the burning bush. That incident already happened. will happen again. 
It could. God can become a burning bush one more time for somebody else in this world right now, but I really doubt that God's going to actually do that. Because God doesn't have to do it no more. Because what happens? Jesus speaks to us through our hearts. He doesn't speak as a burning bush no more. He speaks to us through our hearts. He softens our hearts in areas and talks to us through our heart. That's why, see, back then, Jesus wasn't, Jesus was actually in the world back then. Back before, well, when Moses was around, Jesus wasn't even alive to begin with. Number two, when, when Jesus was alive, no one had Jesus in their heart because Jesus was alive. Once Jesus was died, once Jesus died, was buried, and rose again, that's when they accepted Jesus into their heart. How can you accept a living person into your heart? <laughs> Did you get my point? So, um, anyways, where I was going with that, I have no idea. But let's not get off topic here. Let's get into this 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 message today. And yes, oh, that's why. So we're going to do books of the Bible. We're going to study a book. I'm going to expound on it. And we're just going to read until God tells me to stop reading a certain book. We'll do that with some of the books of the Bible. And every once in a while, I'll write a message. But we'll study some more books in the Bible, like Ephesians and John and Mark and Luke and Matthew and different books. You know, and who knows? I might even take like the story of Job and read that for you guys. And then expound on that. You know, who knows? God might speak through me through the Old Testament as well. I hope he does. Because the Old Testament is full of great stuff that people have done. And that people have done in the past. So, without further ado, let's get into a few but brief announcements. And, as always, take it away, hon. Thank you, Mr. TGIF. And here's for our announcements. On Monday nights, we have Mr. TGIF with the message. On Wednesdays, we have Outside the Classroom Wednesdays with Dr. Scott Mullen. On Thursdays, we have Kingdom Collaboration Thursdays with Pastor Lance and Ernissa Travis. Saturdays are Worship Saturdays with Mr. TGIF and a few gospel artists. Keep your ears peeled. We are looking and working on more words and worship for you, our beloved listeners. God bless you. Thank you, Mr. TGIF, and enjoy our next episode. Thank you, hon. That was absolutely beautiful, but how can you keep your ears peeled? That must hurt. <laughs> Let's get into our main song of the show, and our main song is in time, not unknown, but not unknown by unknown artist. It is, I do believe, Clean Clean Heart by none other than Pastor Evangelist Tony Smith. Enjoy. Clean, clean heart.
Sorry about that, guys. My three Freestyle Libre three sensor is having an issue today. Like I said, I got on the wrong bus or whatever, and my phone died, and it just stopped registering my my blood glucose. And apparently, I got it down to like forty one or forty or something. I have no idea how I got that low, but apparently, I got that low and don't know. So thank God I'm still here because it, it was bad. So without further ado, let me get this to stop beeping for a minute. One last time, guys. I promise you. Eh, sorry, guys. There we go. Turn off my Bluetooth. Turn my Bluetooth back on. And let's hit the road, Jack, and don't you come back no more. Hey, we're here. My blood glucose is not here, but we're here. Let me see what she has to say. Hold on. So yes, I had an incident today where I got sick over something. I'm not sure what it was. It could have just been that... Uh, I had a low blood glucose like the meter said I did. So we're here. We're going to get into this thing we call the message for today. And I got a message that, I, that mm, do, I, do I like this message? Absolutely love it. But do I want to preach this message? Absolutely not. Why? Because it's going to bring some people. It's going to, it's going to hurt some people. Not that it's going to hurt people physically, but it's going to hurt some people in the sense that they're going to be going through some stuff. And spiritually saying, the devil doesn't want them to get delivered from things. And so when I preach this message, God might do some deliverance in some people tonight. I hope so. I hope that God uses me to deliver stuff from you guys because that's just the way God is. God's in the delivering business, hey? Let me get my fabulous diet Mountain Dew. There we go. I entitle this message, Fear Not. So let's get straight into this message today. I wrote this one last night. It's absolutely, positively, a great message. And it's entitled, Fear Not. We, yes, even I, do worry about things, and sometimes a lot. So, question is, how do we overcome the fear or the worry? How do we overcome the fear? So, you always have this thing where, even I do it, yes, I will admit, I fear about things. I am afraid of, you know, for example, perfect example, when I first started the podcast, I didn't want to start right away. I said, yeah, I'm going to start. God's calling me to do it. I'm going to start. But in the back of my mind, I kept saying, what if, what if, what if? What if they don't like what I have to say? What if they hear me and they, they call me racist or prejudiced? Or what if I, you know, stand firm on the belief of, you know, homosexuals don't make it into heaven? What if, and what if they think this, this, and this? And I kept saying that to myself over and over. I was afraid of what people would say while doing the podcast. Now, does people do that? They might. They might. And you know what? It's okay. Now I say it's okay because guess what? I don't care what the people say. I'm going to speak what God wants me to speak no matter what. And it could be It could be anything. It's like the other, one of the messages I did was in Canada. I was in Canada. We recorded it. And we did a, a sermon on why it's not good to be gay. Why the Bible says you shouldn't be gay. And we did a whole sermon in Canada on that, which was the riskiest thing in the entire world. Let me tell you why. In Canada, preachers are supposed to take their 
part of the Bible, out of the Bible, and you came and preach on that. Yet I was in the open, out in nowhere, no man's land, with uh, speakers and a microphone, and I was recording this on my tablet, and I was preaching at the top of my lungs that homosexuality is a sin. In the middle of Canada, where I could have been arrested, thank God I wasn't. Let's get a Lord Clap offering on that note. But here's the thing. Here's what I'm trying to say, though. Thank you, Lord, for not getting me arrested in Canada that day. So here's what I'm trying to say. So the main example is this. I thought all these different things. I thought, you know, what would you guys say? What would you guys think? What would you do? I had those issues, but you know what? I overcame them. So, yes, I have a fear sometimes. I fear things. Everyone's going to. It's a natural reaction to anything in this world to fear. So how do we overcome the fear? Let's look at a few scriptures. First scripture is 2 Timothy 1, 7. 2 Timothy 1, 7. We're going to... That's Matthew. Excuse me, John. Acts. Romans. First and Second Corinthians. Galatians. Ephesians. First Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians. First Timothy. Here we go. Now we are looking for. Second Timothy. There we go. Second Timothy. And we're going to Second Timothy. One chapter one verse seven. So Second Timothy. Chapter one, starting at verse. Where are we at here? Starting at verse. The New Testament is so hard to read because it's all mixed up. Starting at verse 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. So God did not give us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. So first, we must know where the fear is coming from. First, got to know where it comes from. And right there in the scripture, it clearly says what? God. Okay, does that mean God gave us the fear? Absolutely not. God did not give us a what? Spirit of fear. But power, love, and of a sound mind. So first we must know where where it comes from. We must know where the fear comes from. Because God will never give us fear. The Bible clearly states that God gave us, does not give us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Now, who does the fear come from? The enemy, Satan. Now, why do I say it comes from him? Because what's the first thing that happens when anything goes wrong? He pops in your head and says, well, what if this? And what if that? How about what if this? And God's over there saying, well, hey, don't listen to that. I'm here. I got you. It's okay. But you're too busy listening to the nonsense. What if this? What if that? And now you're all afraid of what's going to happen over here when God's over there saying, look, I'm trying to take care of this for you. Hello? 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 It's like, and I use this as an example, uh, the New Life Drama Club. They came out to our church in Michigan a while back ago. I haven't seen those guys in forever. And the lady is getting to know. She loves Jesus, goes to church every Sunday. She she uh, dances on stage at the church. She gives them the offering. Then she meets the man. The man comes into her life. Then she still loves Jesus, but she, she loves him too. And the next thing you know, she's going down the road, and she's married the man. She has kids with the man, and, you know, the man... Starts to become abusive. He cheats on her and all this. And 
while she is no longer doing things in the church, she is no longer praying to God, she finally gets to her wit's end, and she what? Gets on her knees and says, Lord, I'm sorry. And then she comes back to God. Okay, but what's the whole story about? The whole story about is the fact that God was still there. God's, hey, here I am. I'm kind to conquer this for you. I'm over here. Hey, you uh, you want to get rid of that? Give it to me. Hello, hey. We're too busy listening to what if, what if, what if. We're too busy with the world. We're too busy listening to the devil's nonsense. Because, yes, the devil's nonsense is loud. When the devil speaks, he speaks at an unbearable tone to where you can't hear anything else. You got the world, you got the music of the world, you got the TV of the world, you got this, you got that, you got cars bustling, you got people cursing at people. By the time you get to actually trying to listen to God, God's like, hello, hey, hey. He's like, he's not really whispering, but it's to the point to where you can't hear what God's trying to tell you because you're too busy with listening to what if this happens. It's like, for an example, my wife, and I'm going to use this as an example, and she's probably going to hurt me when I get done, but that's okay. I will let her hurt me for this. My wife is talking to her brother for the first time, and they've been talking for a while, but she always goes about, well, I think I said something wrong, or, you know, I, I might have said something bad, or well, why did you say that? Why you, why you think that for, hon? Well, because he ain't talking to me right now, and... I'm like, hon, it's okay. Just chill out. But what if he... I said, hon, it's okay. Give it to God. But what if he... And then guess what happens? About four or five hours later, oh, I'm sorry, spending time with my wife, or I was this, I was that. He always comes back and he does, eventually starts talking to her again. I said, hon, was it necessary for you to worry about that over there? No, but that's just me. But see, that's not just us. God does not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and sound mind. So here's the thing, though. As in the example, I tell her, just give it to God. Let God take care of it. Do this, do that. You know, those type of things. And that's what we need to do. But we need to know that God doesn't give that to us. That is not from God. God does not give us a spirit of fear. God gives us power, love, and a sound mind. Those three things come from God. Power, love, and sound mind. Now, will the enemy ever give you power? No. Will he ever give you love? He might do it for, you know, a few, and then next thing you know, you're. it's like, yeah, I tricked you. You're in hell. And does he give you sound mind? Absolutely not. The devil makes you go crazy. The devil can whisper things in your ears that make you go nuts and you belong into the, you go to the funny farm. I'm so sorry, guys. My uh, sensor just went off again. Let me check why. So, the devil will never, ever, ever make you uh, in any way, shape, or form have a sound mind. He'll make you go nuts. Okay, my sensor apparently is not working anymore. Let me see if... Not sure why it's not, but okay. So the devil will never give you anything that's good. Hold on, my sensor is dead. It just said so. So the devil never gives you power, love, or a sound mind. Actually, the devil makes you go nuts. And so with that being said, who does it come from? It comes from the devil. The devil is the only one who gives you what? Fear. Devil, and I tell some, used to tell some of my wife all the time, because my wife would always, 
you know, say things like, uh, well, what if the devil did that to you? Well, the devil never do anything that's good. Like, for instance, you know, if, uh, if, you know, I was healed, right? That was one of the classics back in the days. Well, how you know it from God? How you know the devil didn't heal you? The devil would not give you anything good. Well, he would for a few, and then it would go away. I said, "Hun, I was healed for good. Like, for an example, I had a hernia. And back in the day, she'd say, well, how do you know that the devil didn't heal you with that hernia? It's still healed. It's gone. How would the devil do anything good? So see, the devil never wants to give you anything that's peaceful. He wants to give you everything that is what? Spoiled and rotten. That's the way the devil is. He wants to make you go so nuts that you eventually give up on God. And guess what? Don't let that happen. So number one, how do so number one, we must know where the fear is coming from. Because God never gives us fear but power, love, and a sound mind. Our second scripture is Matthew sixteen twenty seven. Let's go to Matthew. Matthew, there we go, chapter 16, starting at verse, where are we at here, 27, for the, let me make sure, yep, that is 27, for the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will renew each according to his works. That's Matthew 16. Is that 27? Yes. For the Son of Man will come in the, in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will renew each according to his works. Now, is that just uh, 27? Matthew. Oh, I must have did it wrong. Let me make sure I didn't do that wrong. We're going to read a second scripture. We're going to read Matthew 1, verses 6 through 7. So Matthew 1. Six, and Jesse began, begot David, the king of Okay, that's not it either. So, I'm not sure why. Okay, we're going to read my comments for right now. Now that we know that fear comes from the devil, we must rebuke it. So let me, let me read that. We must rebuke it. So why did I put Matthew 16, 27? Sometimes I have a, an issue where I put things that I don't know why I did. For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father and his angels, and then he will renew each according to his works. So I'm not sure why. Let me see. Oh, that's the scripture. Okay, let me look this up real quick. Sorry, guys. Give me just a second. It's right here in my chat GBT where I've gotten several scriptures from and okay here it is Matthew 16 23 that's what it is we got to rewrite that on there 
Matthew 16, not 27. I must have been tired last night. Matthew 16, 23. But somebody need to hear Matthew 16, 27. So we're going to go back to Matthew. We are in Matthew right now. We are going to go to chapter 16, and we're going to go to verse 23. Where are we at here? 23. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of man. Let me say that to you again. He was looking at Peter. See, this is the story that precedes that specific scripture. So, Peter, now Peter, I will say this. Peter had uh, a motive, okay? Peter, Peter's heart was for God. And I guarantee you, Peter didn't mean anything by this in the wrong, slightest way. Peter really meant meant this because he loved God, I guarantee it. But Satan spoke through Peter and said, and Peter said, he said, look, I'll go even unto death with you, Jesus. And Jesus said, not to Peter, but to Satan. He said, Satan, get behind me. You are an offense to me. You do not think of the things of God, but the things of man. Now, Peter had right motives. Peter loved God, and I guarantee that anybody who loves God that much would do whatever they could so that their Lord and Savior doesn't die, right? I agree with that. But it wasn't Peter speaking. It was Satan speaking through Peter. And Satan knew that if Peter would have died on that cross with Jesus, it would have been null and void. Why? You ask me, why, Pastor? Why, Chaplain? Because two thieves down the cross, why would it be null and void and it's not null and void now? Because those two thieves had to die next to Jesus as well. Because it was for it was foretold in the scriptures. It was foretold that a man will die between two thieves. Now, the main reason is this, because if Peter would have went and died with Jesus on that cross then do you think that one that one man who defended Jesus when he said, look, he did nothing. We did what we did. We deserve our punishment. He said, wherever you go, whenever you get there, remember me. He said, from this day forward, you'll be with me in paradise. Do you think that that thief would have made it to heaven then? Probably not. Because see, Satan is in the business of getting people to go to hell. That's his job. His job, A1 number one job is to get people to go to hell. And if Satan can get people to go to hell, then guess what? Then guess what? Then, then he's done his job. He's done his job if he can get people to go to hell. So by Peter dying on the cross with Jesus, it would have been null and void. And even that one sinner would not have made it to heaven. So Satan knew what was going on. So Satan said that through Peter. And Jesus, Jesus did one thing. He rebuked him by saying, Satan, get behind me. For you are an offense to me. You do not think of the things of man, but the things of... You do not think of the things of God, but the things of man. So he does not think of the things above, but the things down here. So... Matthew 16, 23, now that we know that, pe that fear comes from the devil, we must rebuke it. Just as Jesus said to Peter, we must do the same. We must do the same. Satan, get behind me in the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. And go ahead and do exactly. You are an offense to me. You do not think of the things of God, but the things of man. You get behind me, Satan, now in Jesus' name. In any circumstance that you go through, yes, you're going to go through stuff. Yes, junk's going to come in your life. And yes, you're going to have a problem where you're going to be afraid. You're going to be fearful. And you're going to say to yourself, what am I going to do? But the first thing you should do is, Satan, you get behind me right now in the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. And you say that with authority. Don't well, 
can you get behind me? No, you say that with authority. You say you get behind me now in the name of Jesus. And you don't just, in the name of Jesus. You say, in the name of Jesus, my Lord and Savior. Because guess what? He hates when people admit to Jesus as Lord and Savior. He hates that with a passion. He hates that Jesus is people's Lord and Savior. That's why he tries. That's why the Bible says even, even God's elect will be fooled at the end of time. Because guess what? Satan's going to try to take as many as he can with him to hell. If he's going to go, you're going to go with him. That's just the philosophy. If I'm going, you're going. But guess what? As long as you know who Jesus is, that's it. Just know. Just believe. That is it. You'll make it to heaven. But, there's a but, big but to this. If you want things while you're there, if you want your mansion to be filled with jewels and diamonds and gold, if you want, you know, to have furniture in your place, if you want all this stuff, yes, you're going to get to heaven just by believing. That's fire insurance. But all this other stuff that is treasures laid up in heaven, it says what? Lay up treasures in heaven, right? But that's the stuff, that's the stuff, see, it says, wait, how does it say it again, Lord? It says, but lay up your treasures in heaven, in the storehouse of heaven. See, when you do that, and you live a righteous life, and you do exactly what the Bible says to do, then all that up there be added unto you. See, all the other stuff come to you if you live a righteous life. But see, you can't. You can't. Uh, you can't do everything but one thing and then you figure, oh, yeah, I'm good, I'm good. No. it's you got to be 100% with God. But the thing about it is we need to rebuke it because we can't take fear with us. We're going to get up to the pearly gates one day and God's going to look at us and he's going to say, well, you had fear. You didn't rebuke that. You didn't get rid of that. You still had fear when you died on, when you died and came to these pearly gates. As of right now, I can see that fear on you. I judge you in the name of Jesus, right? He'll judge you by every letter of the law. But, see, we need to what? Rebuke it. The minute we rebuke it, and the minute that Satan knows that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, he hates that. He has to flee. He sa it says, at the name of Jesus, demons tremble and Satan flees. It doesn't just say, you know, Satan trembles. It says he flees. He gets out of there. He's like, oh, crap. Oh, crap. Andrew's proclaiming the name of Jesus again. I am out of here. Period. He flees. He doesn't just, well, well. No, he, he he's like, I'm out of here now. So, so the second thing we must do is we must rebuke rebuke it the same in the same way Satan Jesus did to Satan Satan get behind me in the name of Jesus my Lord and Savior he says you get behind me Satan you are an offense to me you do not think of the things of heaven but the things of man so we need to rebuke him just like Jesus rebuked him from Peter and our third scripture is first Peter 5 7 so first thing we got to do is we got to what? We got to know where it comes from. The second thing we got to do is we got to what? We got, now that we know where it comes from, it comes from the devil, we've got to rebuke it, right? Rebuke it. First Peter 5, 7 is our next scripture. So we got to rebuke it. So now that we, now that we've learned where it comes from, now that we rebuked it, now, first Peter 5, 7, I know this one's from heart. This is, one of my favorite scriptures because it's actually on one of my shirt designs that I created. It's called the Fed Up shirt design. And it looks like the FedEx logo, but it says Fed Up. It says, let Jesus take over or something like that. And I'll tell you why it says that. First Peter chapter 5, starting at verse 7. And this is why my shirt says, let Jesus take over. Chapter 5, verse 7 of First 
Peter. Cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. And in my shirt it says, fed up, let Jesus take over, for he cares for you. For he cares. For he cares, it says. First Peter 5, 7. So, the third thing that we must do. First, we got to what? Know where it comes from. Second, we got to what? Rebuke it. The third thing we've got to do is we've got to what? Cast over. All of our burdens now upon Jesus. Now that we've learned where it came from, now that we've rebuked it, sorry for my stuttering, now that we've rebuked it, now we got to cast all that junk onto God, onto Jesus. What does the Bible say? Jesus casts our sins and our garbage as far as the east is to the west. Let me ask you a question. Is there any point on a globe where east and west actually meet no i mean on a globe you have where it's got the half see a globe is pieced together and two halves are pieced together and glued together of course there's going to be a seam on a globe but in the real world on earth there's no point in which the east and the west actually meet so he throws as far as the east is to the west and there is no such point in where they meet so he cast our sins our garbage into the sea of forgetfulness so the First thing we do is we know where it comes from. We learn where it comes from. Second, we now we know where it is from. We rebuke it. The third thing, we cast our cares on him, for he cares for us. Finally, we must pray. It says in Philippians, in Philippians 1, wait, in Philippians 4, 6 or 7, with prayer and supplication, let your request be made known to God. So, in what I'm trying to say in this part of the message, we've got to what? Cast it all onto him. Give him. I, I used to, good example. I used to tell this to my lady friend, Lisa, one of my great bosses. Again, hello, Lisa. This is Chaplain Andrew here saying hello to you on the show. I, this is a shout out to Lisa from the pantry in uh, Sterling Heights, Michigan. And so, every once in a while, whenever she had a rotten day or she just wasn't feeling good, I'd, I'd go up to her and say, Lisa, it's okay. But tonight, give God an earful. She goes, I will, Andrew. I'll give God an earful tonight. She come back, she'll say, Andrew, I gave God an earful. I feel better. And I would tell her that, Lisa, give God an earful. Lisa, give God an earful. Why? Because we're supposed to cast our cares onto Him. When we cast our cares onto Jesus, what happens? Does Jesus, you know, just take it back, take it back? No, He, he takes it from us. He says, You don't want that. And throws that as far as the east is to the west. You don't want that. Throws that as far as the east is to the west. And he says, well, since there's no point between the east and west, unfor uh, oh, unforgiveness, that's going to see your forgetfulness. Oh, this is a sin. It's going to deceive unforgetfulness. Oh, fear? Uh, get away. See of unforgetfulness. So see, Jesus throws it away and doesn't even remember it. But see, we end up taking things back. That's the problem with us. We take things back. But the main point is to cast your cares upon him. Once you've known where it came from, once you've rebuked it, now give it to God. And when you give it to God, everything will be smoother in your life with that area. So finally, we must pray. It says in Philippians 4, 6 to 7, with prayer, and supplication, let your request be made known to God. So, to overcome fear, we must, one, know where it comes from. Two, we must rebuke it. And three, we've got to pray. we got to cast our cares upon Jesus. Let him know. Because, see, he wants to know these things. Yes, Jesus is God, and God knows everything. Yes, God knows absolutely everything. Let me give you a good example on that, too. There's the man at the at the uh, at the gates, right? Blind man at the gates, blind Bartimaeus, I think his name was. And God comes up to him. God knows that he's blind. God knows that he can't see. God knows all this. But what does God do? He says, "What do you want from me?" Huh? God asks, "What?" God knows what's going on, but God asks him, "What do you want from me?" Why? Because God wants us to confess it. 
When we confess with our mouths, that's when the salvation, the healing, and all that comes from is confession. When you confess with your mouth what's going on in your life, and you give that to God, you cast that care upon God, guess what? It's done. It's over. As the French say, it's finito or finny. It's done. And the thing about it is, is though he asked them what he wanted because we God wants us to say it. God wants to hear from us what what it is that we need from him. Because God's not gonna just read our minds and say, Yep, I know it already, it's done. No, he wants us to confess it. It says with it says what? Confess your sins to one another. With confession comes salvation, healing, all that stuff. But we as believers got to confess. Jesus wants to hear from us what's going on. Even if you have a great day, say, you know what, Lord? I had a great day today. Do you want to hear about this? He would love to hear about your day. Jesus would love if we just talked to him. Hey, man, you know, did you see that thing at the dishwasher today? Oh, man, it was hilarious. Well, yeah, he saw it, but he wants you to talk about talk to him he wants you to communicate with him that's why he asked the guy at the blind bar maze at the gate what do you want he wanted him to communicate with him so yes god knows everything but we must what confess to him cast our cares upon him and that's it so first we know where it comes from second we rebuke it and third we cast our cares upon him I thought that was a great message, and it wasn't very long. We've only been here for 50 minutes. Praise the Lord. But I love what's going on with this. So, hey, we're going to get into our next song on the list. And, yes, excuse me, our next song is a good one. In the words of Mark Lowry, it's a doozy. So we're going to get into our next song on the list. And our next song is Breakthrough by None Other Than Dr. Tom Ray. And that's a perfect song to sing or listen to while we're discussing about fear. So let's get into Breakthrough by None Other Than Dr. Tom Ray. Enjoy Breakthrough.
There you go, guys. That was Breakthrough by none other than Dr. Tom Ray, my friend and worship leader for 19 years. We got three more songs to play. We're going to play two. We're going to pray. We're going to play the last one. Our next song is His Word by none other than my guest and friend on the show, The Light Warrior. Enjoy His Word. was in the beginning, the life, the truth, the hope. The worlds came into being by the power words he spoke. He sang life's song over the water and the dust, bringing forth man, beast, and bird. And he holds it all together now by the power of his word. His word is spirit. His word is life. His word is love. His word redemption. There you go, guys. That was his word by none other than the Cade Daniel Spirit Truth Worship Band. We're going to play our next song. Then we're going to play and play our last song. Our next song is Lord Lead You by none other than Dr. Prophet Larry O'Rell. 
my friend for over 16 years. Enjoy, Lord, lead me. There you go, guys. That was Lord Lead Me, but none other than my friend for over 16 years, Dr. Prophet Larry O'Rell. Let's pray. Lord, we humbly come back before you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you are God and God alone. And we thank you, Lord, that we got to learn why it's important to fear not and how to get rid of that. I thank you, Lord, that you're blessing everyone to sound of my voice, giving them their heart's desires as long as it does not be what selfish. And Lord... I ask you to heal them from the tops of their heads to the soles of their feet from cancer, diabetes, like I have, muscular dystrophy, excuse me, multiple sclerosis, heal my heal my mom's atrophy, my sister's diabetes in her heart, and my sister-in-law's heart, that they're not bad no more. And Lord, I ask you to heal them from, heal people from diseases that contract themselves through sin. Yes, HIV, AIDS, syphilis, gonorrhea, herpes, why? When you heal them, shows your mercy, your power, and your grace. Shows your mercy, power, and grace. And remind of a scripture, Lord, says you came through the door. It doesn't say you opened the door, it says you passed right straight through the door because you're all spirit at that moment. Excuse me, guys. Excuse me, Lord. And, and you said, Thomas, look at my hands. Thrust your finger in my side and see that I'm God. What did Thomas do? He got on his knees. And said, truly, you are the Son of God. What did you say? Blessed are those who have seen and believed. But it doesn't stop there. It says, blessed are those who have not seen yet still believe. And they'll say, if you did it then, you'll do it again. So show them now, Lord. So when they come back needing absolutely anything, they won't have to say it to see it to believe. Because they'll say, if you did it then, you'll do it again. Because your word again, Lord, says you're the same God yesterday, today, and forever. We thank you, we praise you, and we honor you. It's all in the matchless name of Christ that we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen, boom, boom, boom. Amen, doom, doom, doom. Amen, amen, amen. Our last song on the list is one voice by none other than the greatest, one of the greatest bands we have here on the show, the K. Daniel Spirit and Truth Worship Band. Enjoy one voice. One. 
One voice, one cross, you did it all for us. One voice, one cross, you did it all for us. Our heart's desire is to worship. There you go, guys. That was one voice by none other than the K. Daniel Spirit and Truth Worship Band. That does conclude our show for today. As always, two things to remind you. I'm going to start redoing the app again soon. Download the previous version of the app. It is absolutely 100% phenomenal. And you can do all these fabulous, wonderful things. Number two, ask your Alexa device. Say, Alexa, open Podcast Portal. You should say welcome to or welcome back to Podcast Portal. You can listen to this very show straight from your Alexa devices. We also got that skill for video Alexa devices as well. Again, say Alexa, open Podcast Portal. She say welcome to or welcome back to Podcast Portal. And that does, guys, conclude our show for today. As always, this is TGIF Reminding You 2. 1. Trust in the Lord in all your ways. 2. Lean out to your own understandings. And 3. In all of your ways, acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. Thank you, and good night.